this morning, the death of three young children is shining a national spotlight on postpartum psychosis. It's a rare but serious mental health illness. Police say 32-year-old Lindsay Clancy strangled her eight-month-old son along with his five- and three-year-old siblings inside their Massachusetts home last week. All children died at the local hospital. They believe she attacked the kids right before she jumped out a window. The mother is recovering at a Boston hospital and is facing at least two counts of murder, uh, but authorities say more charges may be on the way. Joining Morning Rush is Dr. Michelle Davidson, founder of Chesapeake Bay Psychiatry. Michelle helps parents that are struggling uh, with postpartum psychosis. Michelle, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, obviously a very, very just tragic situation um, with a, a very tragic end here. Can you help us understand what this is, this postpartum psychosis? Because for a lot of people, this may be the first time they're even hearing about this. Exactly. So postpartum psychosis, while it is the rarest of the postpartum mood and anxiety disorders, by statistics, isn't as rare as some may think. Um, for example, in 2021, there were 3.6 million births in the United States. 3,600 birthing persons are going to suffer from postpartum psychosis. And that's the individual. That doesn't include the families and the infants. Postpartum psychosis is when there is a break in reality. The birthing person may have delusions. They may have hallucinations. They may not know right from wrong. They may not know what is real and what isn't real. And when we hear stories like this, I mean, we think about how this just goes against everything that we know, right? Biologically, emotionally, we, 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 we see mothers as people that are supposed to be protectors. I mean, you carry this baby for 40 weeks in a, in a lot of cases, um, and then something like this happens. Can you walk our viewers through um, just how different it is when you're talking about postpartum anxiety, postpartum depression, and then there's this that may be a little bit less known, um, how, how it can affect the brain and kind of walk us through that part, how this changes a woman's brain. Sure. When you think about the postpartum mood and anxiety disorders, we know that they're influenced by hormonal fluctuations. As soon as that umbilical cord is cut, we have extremes in hormones that begin. Um, with someone with postpartum depression, for example, you have your depressive mood symptoms. There may be no risk factors at all, and there are some risk factors. In postpartum anxiety, it's someone who hasn't had an anxiety or had pre-existing anxiety and has excessive anxiousness, worrying, and anxiety. In postpartum psychosis, we don't really know the cause exactly, the biological, biophysiological causes, but we do know that it occurs. When it does incur, there seems to be um, some dopamine association in individuals with psychosis. M most people with psychosis either have pre-existing borderline, I'm sorry, bipolar disorder, or um, will develop bipolar disorder. However, 10% of women have what we call a depressive state that turns into um, psychotic features, and that's also included in this category. So you can see women with different risk factors, including bipolar disorder, mood disorder, family history of mood disorders and bipolar disorder, um, lack of social support is one. We worry about our military families. We will worry about um, individuals who don't have support. Mm -hmm. um, there's a variety of factors, but you see in many cases, these are well-supported birthing persons, well-supported women with a great support system. We see nurses, teachers, we see um, variety of professions. We see individuals highly educated and we see people with um, minimal educations. So it knows no um, class of people, race of people, ethnicity, LGBTQIA people, anyone can be affected by this disorder. So the important thing is information and education for those birthing families. That's really essential. So I want to talk about the support system that you were kind of touching on, um, because when it comes to 
partners, I believe that there can be a little bit of a feeling of helplessness when it comes to, okay, what can I do for my partner who just went through this um, insanely traumatic experience? I'm 38 weeks pregnant now, so I definitely understand uh, kind of just the ebbs and flows of the hormones and, you know, having those open conversations with my husband, but I know that doesn't happen all the time. So for partners um, in this postpartum phase, what are some things that they can maybe look out for um, that can maybe start a conversation that may be a little bit difficult? Well, I think the really important thing is for mom to be supported throughout pregnancy in the postpartum period and for obstetrical and midwifery providers to have these conversations with families. We screen every woman, every birthing person for Down syndrome and chromosomal abnormalities with a first trimester screening test. Down syndrome occurs in one in 700. We screen no one for postpartum psychosis, unfortunately. It's very rare, and that incurs in one to two per thousand. So we need education, we need early screening. Screening Partners, sleep is so important. We did some research on what are pre-psychotic indicators, and we found that pre-psychotic indicators, 100% of people in our study had a lack of two hours of sleep or less. If you have a partner not sleeping, you're exhausted after childbirth, something's going on. Checking in with your partner every day, providing support, opportunities for sleep, especially in breastfeeding individuals. Mm -hmm. Those poor people are up every two hours, every three hours breastfeeding, and we need some support, whether it's getting baby out of the crib, maybe pumping during the day, letting her sleep through a feeding, um, letting them have a little bit of sleep during the day is critical. Support groups are so important and peer support. Um, Postpartum Support International leads the efforts throughout the world in providing online free support groups. There is now through HRSA, a maternal mental health hotline, 24 hours staffed by amazing perinatal health, mental health certified individuals who are counselors, therapists, nurses. Um, reach out to that line, get resources in your community, no resources in your community um, where you can go for help and support. Postpartum Support National also has a warm line in Spanish and English um, with folks answering phones, answering texts 24 hours a day. Those resources are going to be critical if you're facing a perinatal mood or anxiety disorder. All very good uh, resources to know here. Dr. Michelle Davidson, founder of Chesapeake Bay Psychiatry. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your insight on this topic. We really appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks. All right, if you or someone you know is suffering from a mental health illness, we've listed a number of free resources on your screen. Uh, for the crisis text line, text the word HOME to 741-741. We've also listed the disaster distress helpline. You can call or text 988 for help from the suicide and crisis lifeline.